This is my jury badge. This is my first time that I serve on jury duty uh, after many years of you know cancellations. Let me share with you some good um, experience and maybe some tips on uh, how to be on jury duty or basically how many people sort of get excused by the judge uh, not having to serve jury duty for many reasons. Let's get started. Every year, many of us uh, receive a card that basically uh, you have to call the court the day before your jury duty appearance at the court. And based on my experience, uh, many years, um, sometimes we can excuse uh, maybe a few times, you know, if you, if they allow you to do that um, by phone or, you know, just contact them or whatnot, you, you can actually excuse, let's say you're in college, you know, things like that, and you have tests and final, and it's gonna be very difficult for you. Uh, many times they allow you to do that. But for most cases, the day prior to the court appearance, uh, you have to call in like, you know, after 5 p.m. the day before. And in my case, uh, they actually did not need me, so they canceled my, uh, my appearance for the last few years. Until this year, uh, I call and then I have to show up. They tell me that I have to go at the court in, you know, Rancho Cucamonga in California before 9 a.m. Uh, make sure, you know, to be there early because they have uh, security that you have to go through. And then once you go in, you're gonna be in, uh, well, probably a lot of people are gonna be in line and then they may have you, they may have you fill out some something, uh, ask you about different things and, uh, you know, if you have any bad experience with uh, judicial system or any any crimes or anything like that, you know, uh, different things depend on where, which court and where you're at. And then they're gonna gather you, uh, bring you to a jury assembly room. You know, just a lot of seats, you see a lot of people sitting there. And then they're gonna split you into Maybe in my case, a couple of groups, they call, uh, they call us, you know, they put it in panel A and panel B, uh, maybe like 30 of, 30 of us in each group. And then, you know, expect depending because before they bring you up to the courtroom, maybe upstairs or whatnot there, the judge and everybody, the attorney, and we have to be ready. So it might take some time actually we had to come back. They actually sent us, you know, to lunch. And then I think we came back like after one or one thirty in the room. And then later on in the evening, I think it was on Monday last, uh, before last week, couple of weeks ago. And then they call, call us up uh, into a room, okay? And then you went up to the room, maybe elevator, whatnot, and um, then there will be many courtrooms, but you have to go to the one that they tell you which you know the room number where you go to, and then the the bailiff will come out and take you in. And the first step they are doing is um, in the room. There there going to be a judge, defense attorney, prosecutor, and you know bailiff and some police officer and some clerks. And they're gonna start the process called jury selection, meaning they're gonna have each of us sit at, they have like 12 seats in the front across from the judge. And they have, you know, they will call like 12 names and we sit there and then uh, the judge, uh, attorney, and the prosecutor will basically interview you, make sure that you, you are a good fit. And most people, actually being excused because financial difficulty, uh, maybe the company uh, doesn't pay uh, for jury duty. Maybe they have some other obligations. Uh, maybe uh, if you're a student, maybe you have finals and things like that and will make you worry on, or you know, 
will not make you a good juror because you're going to be distracted and worry about uh, you know your work your study you know in the back of your mind so they're going to interview each of you and then like i say they're going to ask you you know you're going to have a difficult time being a, a fair unbiased uh, juror for the next week or next couple weeks you know and if they see that you're not comfortable and you have other obligations that you know or you 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 are biased against defendant or prosecutor or police officer and things like that that you don't like judicial system and things like that so again you you you're gonna be under oath you know all of this so you have to tell the truth and be honest and many of the people will, will get sent home because they're, they're not qualified to serve on the jury uh, panel. And uh, I think this took like three days. So it took a, it took a lot of time to screen, screen out. And finally I was selected in which I was kind of, you know, happy <laughs> because I never done it before. And my company paid for my uh, jury duty. So I don't have any obligations and, you know, and like, a, I told them I'm a pretty a fair person and okay this is very important because the judge gonna give you instruction very important instruction that um, at the beginning based on the Constitution and the defendant that got caught for whatever reason with no evidence okay he or she assumed to be innocent and it's up to a prosecutor to prove to you with evidence from photos, videos, audios, and whatnot, you know, uh, and particularly from uh, uh, witnesses. Police can be a police officer and a neighbor, or you know, uh, the people that get affected by by the crime. And then you can only use evidence, whether it is direct evidence that you know you see something happen you know that is the direct evidence let's say you see you see that it's it's raining outside and people come in get wet so you know that it's raining you, you see that it's raining now if you inside a building you don't know that it's raining and then a person came in with wet you know with water or on their clothes or you know jacket and you can use what they call um, circumstantial evidence then you can kind of figure out the pieces that yeah you know the person came in with water and all of that and you know it must be raining outside so they ask you uh, which kind of a person you are and if you say you are direct um, evidence person that you got to see everything before you make a decision then they might not like you because both evidence direct or uh, circumstantial evidence are equal so you can use both of them to connect pieces uh, you know and come up with the decision during the deliberation so uh, and the attorney will screen out different questions to make sure you're a good fit you know that you're not biased that in the in your past experience you don't have you you're not you were not a victim of similar crime and you feel like you you, you become bias you know against defendant for example so um so that's jury sec uh, jury selection process and it took like three days actually four days the fourth day i believe uh in the morning on the fourth day we got the the panel they also so there are there are 12 of us and then they also select two alternate jurors in case you know some of us 12 have to leave or you know are not available and then on the fourth day in the afternoon they start calling the witnesses okay and then they want you to make sure after witnesses testify that you know either you feel comfortable with their testimonies you know uh, to have the are they credible that's important in my case they all they all were credible which is good they, they're a couple there are couples who their home basically got uh, burglary, uh, burglarized uh, by a by a guy. It's kind of kind of funny, and I can 
tell you a little bit more about the case. Uh, now, during the case, you're not allowed to talk to anyone. Even your family, you're not allowed to do any research online. You're not allowed to go to a, a crime scene and, you know, do investigation. Um, you know, you're not allowed to even talk to attorney or prosecutor. If you talk to them, then they're going to have a hearing, you know, you know, it's going to be a mess, right? So you, you're not allowed to talk to other jurors, jurors neither. Okay. Very important. So after you listen to um, the witnesses, during the, the testimony, the attorney and even the judge, I believe, um, and the prosecutor can, you know, ask questions uh, from the witnesses to get more information or more, more evidence for us. We know, of course, we're not allowed to, to ask any questions. We just stay quiet and just listen. They gave us if is of us a notebook, a small notebook to to write down any note, and we can request any um, any documents uh, during deliberation. That's the final stage. So after you um, they went through and finished with the witnesses, then twelve of us will go will go to a room and do deliberation, come up with the QT or not QT, and you know or hung jury whatever you know so um, so after four day we start deliberation actually it did not take long on the fifth day in the morning at the beginning of the last day there were a couple of people that would not convince or had questions about you know uh, we need to be able to come up with the decision uh, let's say we come up with the guilty you know, I come up with guilty verdict, and each of us um, should come up with their own decision. We we should not allow other people or other jurors to uh, impose decision on you. Everybody have their own independent decision. They have to, you know, with evidence and deliberation, eventually they have to come up with their own. If they don't believe that the guy is guilty, then th that be it. We may have a hung jury. But anyway, um, there were a couple person that that were not com comfortable. What we did at the beginning of deliberation is uh, to have a, ser a secret uh, balance. So each of us will write down guilty, not guilty, and you know give it to the. We selected the, what they call a, a foreman. So the person that organized the meeting and you know uh, or, or get back to the court. Uh, so we, uh, this lady actually uh, gracefully uh, accepted the, uh, you know, the position to be a, a foreman. So the foreman is just one of us, uh, 12 of us. So, um, so we, to give you folks, if this is your first time uh, being on a jury, it's very important because, you know, case can be complicated because you try to piece it's different, can be like a puzzles. At least at the beginning, you kind of confused. You know, in my case, it's kind of weird. We don't know the guy is crazy or not, or he under a drug or something like that. But it's good to we have one one guy, you know, young guy. He is an aerospace student, and he came up with you know a pretty simple idea. He he draw, he go to the board, he, he make two columns. One column is guilty, and the other column is um, reasonable doubt because we have to come up with a decision, uh, you know, with no reasonable doubt, right? And then we list bunch of stuff on the left because this is a home burglary. Uh, so we list on uh, guilty side. We listed the guy you know used a knife to uh, to get into the house while uh, the couple were there, and the couple actually ran out, you know, because the guy went into the room and he saw this defendant you know kind of bundle in the the curtain you know because he jumped in from the, the front window actually uh, facing the, the street, which is kind of crazy why you want to do that, you know? And they have lights outside. So, and he's, uh, uh, he saw the, the owner of the house, the guy saw the defendant with a, with a knife, you know, something uh, sharp or metal. So he, he took the fiance and ran out. And then the neighbor joined him later. So the, this defendant, for some weird reason, start throwing stuff inside the house because that's what the 
the the owner uh, here, you know, stopped being thrown in the house and like basically vandalizing. And then uh, the guy, uh, maybe before the owner went out, he actually shut off all the lights. So maybe the the defendant had had time, you know, figuring figuring out his way around because uh, the configuration of the house is kind of weird because the entrance, the, the the door actually in the back of the house, you know, on the side of the house. So. So that the defendant went into the garage and making noise, and, and then at that time, you know, the the owner started calling the police and all that stuff, and yelling, "The guy, get out of my house!" and blah blah blah. I'm gonna call the police. You know, they they start, and then you know, the witness, uh, not the witness, the defendant actually at the end saying that, you know, call the police, don't shoot me, because uh, I think he found out that uh, on the floor there's a, a gun magazine, uh, you know, the magazine that you put bullets in the gun. Maybe he, he saw it. So the defendant thought that the owner had a gun or something like that. So the, the, the defendant ran out. Finally, he came out. And then the the owner and the neighbor, a couple of guys chased him and actually uh, uh, press him, test him with the, the, the gun, you know, the testing gun, and got him there until the police came. So, so there was, uh, you know, um, that, that was pretty much the case. And then um, after the deliberation, you know, I think one of the sticking point is that one of the person think that this guy is under the influence of the the, the drug or he gone crazy. But actually he, he was not crazy. He know what he was doing. You know, he, he used a knife gun into the house. He tried to find stuff. He actually took some drug or some medication, pain medication. And actually he ingested them because the, the owner said that, you know, couple of bottles uh, were empty you know, for the migraine medication and the other one for like something else about pain or calming, you know, distressing or something like that, I believe, uh, some sort of medication. So, and uh, the police found out that the guy had a uh, amphetamine in, in the pocket, but the police did not say that the guy was like crazy or under the influence. Okay, so that evidence we know that uh, during the deliberation, we know that the guy is not crazy. I mean, he can he could produce some drug, but he's not like crazy or insane that he didn't know what's going on. You know, he, he knew what he was doing. He got caught and then he ran now and, and you know, and actually before he got caught, he threw his knife. So he, he, he threw his knife away with the blood. I mean, inside the house, there was blood everywhere. I think he cut himself, maybe from the, the glass or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, we, I kind of, uh, interesting because uh, the lady is saying that you know the guy was crazy insane in drug i mean they cannot use drug or intoxication to uh, to prove the intent they can have an intent to go into the house go to what the only thing people bring to the house is to steal i mean the guy admitted he uh, he uh, you know he, he vandalized he, he throwing stuff in the house so the, that's the second cow but the first cow is a uh, burglary with the uh, uh, with weapon, right? So we actually convicted him on the, the first degree uh, uh, burglary with uh, deadly weapon, things like that. And then there are three or four counts because at, at that time the owners were in the house. So that was kind of scary, you know, experience for the owner. So I think we found him guilty for all counts, four counts. So that's pretty much what we went through. Deliberation we didn't take long in, in our case, and we did not get a hung jury and and that was it so um, so we spent like three or four days doing jury selection and send most of the people actually we have to we have to call in like three batch of people three group of people so that was the longest process uh, jury selection so so i'm done for this year and hopefully next year i might get the card again Hopefully, I I, mean, I don't have to show up, you know. I don't mind showing up. I think it's a good experience for all of us if you have time and you're willing. They actually uh, want more people to be what they call a grand jury that can, you know, help your community with, you know, recommending uh, some new laws or, you know, or actually keep keeping the bad guys in jail and, and, and you know, things like that by, you know, going to... Uh, become a grand jury and, and helping the, the court to, to you know, prosecute the bad guys, um, you know, 
with the right evidence, of course. You know, we, we presume the um, defendant is innocent before he, he found guilty with, with evidence only. You, you're not allowed to use Let's say the attorney and the prosecutor, of course, many times they, they will come out and try to, you know, express their point of view. Um, you, you're not supposed to take their point of views or whatever they're saying as evidence, that crucial. You can only use evidence from, from the witnesses, from the photos, the videos, the audios, and, you know, things like that, physical physical evidence, things like that. So that's a pretty interesting process. Uh, even the judge, you're not supposed to use the judge, uh, the, you know, opinion as evidence. So you gotta be really focused and, and always going back to the evidence. Uh, and by constitution, the defendant, the bad guy in this case, did not have to testify. So you have to throw that out. You cannot say, oh, if he, don't, he doesn't testify, he, he must be guilty. You cannot do that. So that is out the door, based on U.S. Uh, Constitution. So you know that give a uh, defendant uh, not you know ability not to not to testify and not be just like O.J. Simpson, you know, not to be impacted or, or you know have influence on the decision. So only you only you base it on evidence. Now, if you know in in certain cases it's hard. All the evidence will destroy, you know, a person like missing, you have no clue, nothing. It's going to be harder uh, because you have to use circumstantial evidence or, or you know, you have to use what, um, actually get the uh, the defendant, if you can find him, to actually um, actually admit that, you know, he did it. But that's going to be rare, right? Nobody wants to go to jail or, or be on death row. And anyway, I hope it helps. And... Um, I think in your situation or areas might be a little bit different, but I think the process is pretty much the same anyway. So hope, hope it is helpful and we'll see you folks on the next video. I would love to hear your, because it is, you know, pretty interesting to me. I don't mind serving more, but I'd love to hear your comments, your experience with, with cases and if you have any concern or maybe you're, you had a, you were on jury duty and maybe you had questions or concern or, you know, things like that, please please post down below and share uh, about your cases and because you 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 are okay they allow you to share information after after your your case is done okay and uh, now if the attorney try to contact you and ask you a question you know why why you come up you guys come up with this verdict blah 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 you don't have to talk to him at all her at all that's your your right you know just avoid him, okay? Because who know? You know what you what you say can can be used against, can be used for their benefits, and you know might not be good. Anyway, we'll see you folks on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and stay safe.